Hello everyone, my name is Mr Tyrrell and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through um, some ways that you can prepare for your series about success exams. The skills that I'm going to share with you are nothing new. They're things that I went through with everybody at the beginning of this year. And if you've been here longer than the year seven, so you're, you're in year eight, nine, ten or, or twelve, the things I'm going to share with you, you would have seen in Assemblies Live. And you might be thinking to yourself, why are you telling us the same things? It's because if you try these things, they will work for you. I want to share with you some top tips. Um, I spoke to a year eight earlier this week and he can still remember my three top tips because they were based on three words. Um, studying isn't about revision. Studying is about what you do all the time. And so I wanted to remind you of three top tips that you can use that will help you in every single lesson. So here's study tip number one. If you don't understand something in a lesson, ask lots of questions. If you don't can't find the answer in the lesson, go away and find the answer. Okay, go away and find the answer. Be curious. Try and find out for yourself. And you, you still don't know, go and ask your teacher. But questions, ask lots of questions. My second top tip is about telling someone teaching someone when you learn something in class that's brilliant but when you go away and you try and tell somebody about what you've learned or you try and teach something about what you've learned then you're going to remember it and you're more likely to remember it because you've had to teach it to somebody and they might have asked you questions so make sure that you tell people about what you've learned And the third one is to try to do memorising activities throughout the year and not just for tests. So if you remember from my assembly at the beginning of the year, there were three key words. Ask lots of questions, tell people at the end of the day what you've done and do activities throughout the year. Do these things throughout the year so that you can remember as you go. Now we're getting ready for our series about success exams. For year seven to nine, they begin on Monday the 7th of June and they go on for two weeks. That's the week straight after half term. And for year 10s and year 12s, those exams begin on Monday the 14th of June for two weeks. And this week you will be getting some information to help you to prepare for those. Okay. Now. When you have an assessment, how well you do depends on how well you plan and how well you've prepared. And so I'm going to help you with four things that you can try to do to help you to be prepared and have a plan. If we don't have a plan, we get stressed, we get worried and we put things off. And when we put things off, that means we're under too much stress. And it means that our brain won't, won't work well and we won't be able to retrieve information and we won't achieve. But stress is a good thing. It's important for us to have some stress so we realise the importance of something. So we prepare for it so that we want to do well. So I'm going to share with you four things that you can do to help you to prepare. OK, so this is number one, the first thing you can do to help you to prepare for success. I often get asked, when should I start revising? And my answer to that is always as soon as possible. Now, you will have had some information about when your exams are going to be and what will be covered in them. And so it's important that you start preparing now for those. Now, lots of people say to me, well, how should I plan my time? And what I would suggest you would do, you should do is you should use the. The calendars that your form tutors are going to give to you. Now, on those, what I've done 
is I've got the next four weeks, starting from the 17th and going all the way through to the 7th of June. And the reason why I've done that is so that you can start planning how you're going to use your time. You'll notice that I've blanked off the mornings and the afternoons because that's when you'd be at school doing work. And I've left a slot in the evenings and at the weekends, there's a slot for the for the morning, the afternoon and the evening. Now. Even if you did just one session in each of those slots before your exams, that will be about 50 sessions. That's a lot of planning, isn't it? That's a lot of preparing for an assessment. Now, people say to me, well, how do I use that time? How do I organize that time? So if you have a little look, what I've suggested is, look, if you mark X on today's date and Y on the date of your first exam, and you can think about how many sessions you will do in each day. I've suggested one, but you might want to be able to do more at different times of the day. It might be that at weekends you do something particularly special in the morning or the afternoon or the evening. So it might be that you might want to do two in the morning or two in the afternoon to make sure you've done at least three. Now, if you had all, that, all those sessions up, that will come to about at least if you do one, that will come up to about 55 sessions. And if you have about 10 subjects, that means you've got roughly about between five and six sessions per subject. And I would spread them out and decide what topics you're going to do for each of those subjects. And as I've suggested at the bottom, why don't you start with the most difficult topics, the things that you find hardest? So you've got more time to work on them. You've got more time to make sure you understand them. And that's how I would start to plan my time. And by planning my time, I'm reducing my stress because I know exactly what I'm going to do and when I'm going to do it. The second thing people regularly ask me is how long should I revise for? And I suggest that you should a session should either last an hour or 30 minutes. Maybe if you're starting off and you're in year seven or in year eight, why don't you start off with 30 minutes for each session? And maybe you could do two sessions, one for one subject and one for something different. Now, people ask me how I should use that hour. And I suggest that you should do something like this. 40 minutes where you're going through the topics that you've got to cover and you're condensing them down. Now, condensing them down doesn't mean you write out all that work again. It means that you condense it down into shorter sentences. We draw little pictures to help you to remember things. You then give yourself a rest for 15 minutes, make yourself a cup of tea or go and run around outside or go for a little walk or take go, go and play with your dog, whatever it is. And then five minutes, seeing how much of that 40 minutes you've remembered. Maybe getting somebody to ask you questions on it. Maybe you could cover it over and see how much you can remember by writing down on a blank piece of paper. But that's what I suggest you should try to do when you're thinking about how you're going to use your sessions. People regularly ask me how I should condense my notes. And one note taking um, way that I would suggest is something called Cornell note taking. And basically, if you have a little look here on this screen here, we've got that's like a page from a book. And if you split that page from a book into the date, the title is the area, the topic you're going to look at. This is where you condense it down. So look, I've suggested maybe use little short sentences, abbreviations, symbols, pictures. And here, this bit here is really helpful. This is where you write questions about things. Oh, I don't understand that. I need to go and find out about it. Or what can I be asked about in an exam? And would I be able to answer those questions? At the bottom, you summarize what you've done in your note section. And that's what you do in your reviewing time. Maybe in your reviewing time, that's what you would do. You try and summarize the section that you put in the notes. I find this really helpful. The last thing people worry about 
is they've done the planning and the preparing with their calendar. They've looked at how they use their hour or their half hour profitably, and they've used Cornell Notes to do that. And they still say to me, oh, but I can't remember stuff. And that makes total sense, because if we only ever do something once, we're unlikely to remember it. If you want to remember information, I want you to think about Ebbing houses for the getting curve. This is just a case of basically going back to stuff, but planning to go back to things. So maybe you might revise something on that first night in that first session. And the next session, your next revision session, you might just spend five minutes checking what you remembered the previous day. Just by doing that, you're more likely to remember. It will go into that long term memory part of your brain, which means that when you get into a little bit of stress and you go into that exam. You'll be able to remember it. It will be there. So those four four tips, four tips for success, those four tips that will help you battle stress that will prevent you from achieving. Tip one to make sure that you plan and you're prepared and you look you come up with a calendar and you say when you're going to do particular topics. Tip two, use that revision hour, 40 minutes condensing, 15 minutes resting, your brain will still be thinking about that information, and then five minutes checking what you've understood. Then if you want a way of spending that hour, use Cornell Notes. The questions part is very important. And then lastly, to help you to remember, go back to information, purposefully go back. Good luck everyone in your Serious About Success exams. But remember, these four top tips I've given you aren't just for exams, you can use them at any time. Thank you very much.